Hello there folks, Spunky Cook here, aka your Lonely Achievement God, continuing our From Zero to One Thousand Achievement uh, Walkthrough for Duck Life Adventure. With the final part, we completed our training arc. We are completely powered up except for our swimming skill, which we haven't learned yet. And we're going to be basically going to the end of the game now. Um, from this point on, we're avoiding all of the... Uh, overworld ducks, really, unless we're required to fight them or their bosses or something like that. Uh, generally, any of the overworld ducks are going to be in avoided. Um, unless they give us items or weapons or stuff like that. So, first things first, now that you've finished your training, go down and to the right. We're going to go down to the left across the bridge here, down to the right across the bridge here and keep going down by the paint shop here and you're gonna see a fire hydrant duck and we're gonna race them now at this point you shouldn't have any problems with these races we are uh, completely leveled up other than swimming, of course. So if there is any water in races, you might find yourself struggling a little bit. But you shouldn't have any problems winning races or battles for the most part now. Feel free to go do all the extra uh, other duck battles if in races if you want to. But we don't need to anymore. Because you get... Uh, Pieces of a fire hydrant costume for defeating this duck in a race, which is why we come over and race him. And now we need to head back to the upper left part of the city where the Marco statue was. So go up and to the left, and you'll see kind of a road bridge here. We're going to cross it, grab the coins. And we're going to work our way up and to the left again. Get up to the river and follow it to the left. And when we get to this ravine, we're going to fly across. We don't really need the coins much anymore. We're going to ignore the white duck and go to the left here to get totem number eight. And then to the left of the totem is a hoppity hop pink duck who uh, gives you the hopscotch quest, which is just a race where all you do is hop. Uh, press the A button right before you hop to get your boost, and this is not a problem at all. That is quest number 12 for those of you that have been following along with me. And we're gone. Fell off the face of the earth. We hopped so hard. And he didn't make it. We won the race. That turns in the hopscotch quest. Once we get our treasure chest here. And that is number 6 of 21 complete. We're going to be getting a lot of them complete now. Go back slightly right and go south from the totem to fly across the gap. We're going to talk to the orange duck here to get the Where's My Stuff quest. And now we're going to follow this path left. Now you can grab the coins if you want. You don't really need to at this point, but feel free. We're going to go all the way to the left. And eventually we're going to reach some green tents. When we do, we're going to fly south. So fly across the gap here. And we're going to talk to this yellow duck. And this minigame sucks. Um, you have to bounce around the arena, but there's no, like, bounce button. It is just reliant on the game's physics physics engine or however they coded this and it is very frustrating because um, you're going to start turning and twisting like that and then you can't really get up to the uh, the coins at the top what I recommend doing is kind of trying to bounce into the sidewall and that will help you get momentum you need to get about 10 silver coins in total
Um, technically, you just need a gold coin, which is 10 silver or 100 bronze. Uh, I got lucky. I was able to get that minigame on my first try. I, uh, in the other playthroughs leading up to making this walkthrough and recording this, it took me three or four tries to get that quest done. So don't feel bad if you struggle. Um, the best advice I can give you is that if you see your bounces failing, try running into the walls on the left and right so that maybe you'll get launched up into the sky and be able to bounce high enough to get some of the coins hanging up in the air. Once you get to 10 silver, which is one gold, you don't have to keep bouncing. And uh, once you pass the quest, you'll finish the cloud bounce quest for 7 out of 21 complete. Um, once you do, fly south and go left past the weapon shop to find totem number 9. We're going to fly south again and we're going to walk past the fountain ignoring the duck here and fly south to this island we're going to walk past this duck and fly right and we're going to find a boss duck back here which we need to race and fight shouldn't have any problems with this especially if you are using your a button presses for the race and the battle As you can see here, we're uh, kind of destroying him. And now we need to fight him. Again, as long as you're timing your A button presses, this shouldn't be a problem at all. Defeating him will get you a lens, which we need for a quest, which is why we came down here. And we need to go all the way back to the totem now. Fly back north. Fly north again, and then we're going to walk to the right, and you're going to see this viking duck here. We're going to go ahead and race them, because we get a, a cosmetic, I think a hat. Either a hat or a costume, I can't remember what. But again, this guy won't be any problem. Especially if you just came, since we just came from the boss duck. This guy's a piece of cake. Beating him will get you the uh, Viking costume, so it is the lower portion. And I just realized I've been calling those apple cores, and I think they're flowers. Ha! I'm a dummy. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. So we're going to walk all the way to the right here. We're going to fly right across the gap. You can grab the coins if you want. Fly right again, and then when we reach the path, we're going to walk to the right. And uh, I'm going to replace my batteries real quick. Okay, sorry about that. Don't want my controller dying in the middle of the walkthrough. We're going to go up into the cave here. And on the left, we're going to fly across the gap. And we're going to meet Ash Ketchum Duck. He is a boss duck. So we're going to, again, take him out. Shouldn't be any problems at the levels we're at.
And then we have to fight him, and again, shouldn't be a problem at the level we're at with the weapons and armor we have. Again, there's always the possibility attacks miss and stuff like that. Even if you die, you can just fight him again. And we get another glasses lens. Ironically. Well, not ironically, because I already sent you to get those. We're going to need those for the next quest. So once you gain, regain control, go down and fly back across the gap and outside of the cave. You can go and follow the path to the right. And there's some coins over here if you want to grab them. Otherwise, we're going to walk all the way over to this orange duck and talk to them. We're going to get the Vigilante quest, which is number 15. And we're, then we're going to talk to him again, immediately. And this will get us, or turn in the Vigilante quest. And he gives us a pair of glasses, which is another cosmetic item. We're going to fly to the north here to get the totem. This is totem number 10. And now we can train our swimming skill, and this to me is the most fun and easiest training in the game. Takes me less than 15 minutes usually to get to level 50, so we're going to go ahead and start swimming. So what you need to do is you need to get uh, enough speed to get out of the water, and then you're going to flip back, and you need to re-enter at a good angle. So basically, whatever angle you exit, you want to mirror it to get back into the water. And that'll help you build up your speed. The higher you go, the more XP you're going to get. You're also going to want to do flips while you are up in the water. Just make sure that you can realign yourself to get that smooth entry when you come back to the water. And if you do this really well, you can get all 10 levels in a single uh, session. You might notice there is a timer for this in the bottom left, so you can't just do this infinitely, which is kind of good, because if you could, you could get probably all 50 levels in one go, which, I mean, would be cool, but... Be careful when you start building up speed because you can hit the bottom of the lake or water that you're in. But as you can see there, we already hit level 10 just from that uh, first combo we did there. Um, we're not going to have a lot of time to be able to build up another one. And we got to level 11 before we died. That introduces buoys. Um, the ring above them can give you a speed boost, but it's actually kind of difficult to get um, right away. See, what happens is if you wind up touching the buoy, but uh, you just fall back in and lose all of your speed. So I don't tend to worry about the buoy much. Because it can be very difficult. You do get a decent speed boost from it, but it can be difficult to get into it. And the more time you spend fiddling with trying to get into the buoy, the less time you have to build up your speed um, to get a big combo. So... The goal is always to keep your combo up for as long as you can. And to get as high as you can. 
Am I right? <laughs> Sorry. Um, the higher you get, the more bonuses you get to your XP. As you can see there, um, we're running out of time, and we're probably going to run out of time before we hit the water to do another jump. But we got all the way up past level 20 again already, and now we can get to 5 times speed, which can help us get even higher. Hello there, folks. Monkey Cook here. I'm so sorry. Um, I have to re-record probably about... 30 to 40 minutes of footage here uh, because I have some audio issues. So unfortunately, there's going to be some uh, things that don't have achievements pop as we go through um, because I kind of screwed all of this up with my audio mistake. So as you can see, we're at level 20 in swimming. So uh, I'm popping back in and we're going to finish that off. I'm so sorry about this, um, but this is a very easy training, and actually, uh, I think I already said this, but this is one of my, my favorite trainings, uh, because it's fun and simple and quick. There we go, we reached level 30, silver coins instead of bronze, not really all that important for us. We actually got up to 31. And I'm just going to avoid the buoys. Again, there's no reason to really stop before you're about to reach a certain level threshold, especially on this one. Um, it's so easy to level up on this. I think it is anyways. So we got up to 39, I think. I don't know. My eyesight is terrible. I apologize.
Okay, and that's going to probably get us halfway through the 40s by the time we land here. And now we have uh, a faster swim speed underwater and no time limit. I mean, makes it even easier. Yeah, we made it to level 46, so we're actually in way good shape. I don't even know if that's grammatically correct, but we're in really good shape here. Again, there's no time limit here. Um, so technically, you could build your combo as high as you want if you want to mess around with that. Um, we're just going to try to get probably to a times 5 multiplier. Uh, maybe 100 times 5, and that should be enough to get us to level 50, but we'll see what happens. Whoops. Okay, that was enough. Once you hit 50, if it'll let you, go ahead and quit. Can't level up any more than that. And you, you'll you unlock two achievements here. The all-rounder for uh, 50G for um, getting... I think it's for getting a skill. Let me just bring them up. Again, I'm up to 17 now, so my achievements got all screwed up by the glitch. Um... All-rounder is for gaining a level in every skill, and then you'll unlock the demigod achievement, which is for 70G for reaching level 50 in every skill. Once you uh, come outside the building, fly down. We're going to jump off the ledge to the right and go down so you can follow the path up. You can grab the... Uh, or I'm sorry... You're going to talk to the bird here. We already grabbed the totem. The bird will unlock fast travel for us. And it should unlock an achievement. However, the achievement is slow. Um, I think for whatever reason it triggers uh, after a battle or a race. So if you want to get it immediately after we finish this fight as you can see here's one of the glitches that can happen um luckily this is a cakewalk um but if you want to get the achievement immediately you can you know quit out of the game and reload and it will have auto saved and uh the achievement should pop when you reload the game but if you keep playing uh it'll pop at the next uh achievement or battle or race end, excuse me. And that completes the bird race quest, which is number 9 of 21 complete. Um, again, you might get the fly achievement if it works properly for you, but don't worry. Um, if you keep playing, it will pop eventually. If you didn't beat the pink duck over here, uh, earlier, feel free to come back and do that. And we're going to uh, open up our map. And we're going to fly to the Soaring Skies uh, totem over here. The snow area. Go to the right. And fly north here. And fly across again to reach the green tents. And we're going to go to the left. There is an item shop over here. And we're going to go inside. And we're going to buy a Hypno Watch. And we're going to buy a Frostbite. That'll give us two of each of those. And we're going to be 
Um, you may not need them, but we're just going to use them to make a boss fight that's coming up significantly easier. Fly north across the gap and you'll find a pencil on the ground. And then swim north and you'll eventually reach a dragon that we need to fight. It's a boss fight, so we'll have a race and a battle. Um, it's not difficult, but the uh, if you aren't careful with your button presses, or it, it is easily losable. So uh, just manage your A button presses properly, and you should win this. But if the game, you know, glitches on you like it did in our last race, you know, you might wind up having some trouble here. You can see they, they move pretty quickly, so. Once you get the race done, you go into the battle, and again, battle shouldn't be any problem as long as you're timing your A button presses. And I actually thought the battle was a little easier than the race. And then you can def you'll can you defeat Gym Leader Brawly. Again. I think I already made that joke about a different Brawly. There we go, with him defeated. We don't really get anything for it, but the fly achievement should pop for you now. When you uh, get to the end of that fight and start the loading menu, the fly achievement every time I've done this has popped after we defeat the boss here. Um, so that should get, get you to 15 achievements. Uh, I don't remember the exact amount of gamer score. But we're going to fly or walk up into the right to this river, and we're going to swim down into the cave onto the land here, and we're going to grab a magnifying glass. And then we're going to fly up. Or swim up, sorry. Swim up. When you get out here, just walk onto land, and you'll see a calculator by the statue. And we're going to walk all the way to the right. Feel free to grab the jelly coin there if you want to. Fly across the gap. And we're going to fly back into Duck City. Go right. And when you get to the building, go up here and left. And you're going to find some paper behind the hedge. And now we're going to go back the way we came. Fly across the gap. And when you get to the totem, go down to fly across the gap. Talk to the orange duck to turn in the battle challenge. Or, I'm sorry, the Where's My Stuff quest, excuse me. We're going to fly to Mallard Meadows now, which is way back at the beginning, the very first totem we went to. And we need to go right into town. And uh, when you get past the heart building, go up and you'll see a pink duck by the Marco statue. Talk to him to turn in the battle challenge quest. Excuse me, should have read ahead a little bit there. And that's challenge number, or quest number 11 of 21 complete. Go up to the clothing shop here and since we're leveled up, we'll have some more stuff we can buy. We're going to buy the Jack Frost costume. We're going to buy the Jack Frost hat, and we need to go down and buy the B hat, which I think is way down here. There we go, the B hat. So buy the B hat, the Jack Frost hat, and the Jack Frost costume. And that should unlock uh, achievements number 16 and 17 for you, the fashion icon and the top hat. So you should be caught up with me, 17 achievements for 600G. Um, the top hat is for owning five different hats. The fashion icon is for five different armors. You may have unlocked these earlier, depending on what items you've gotten from the jelly coin machine. But uh, I haven't gotten any items, so this is the latest you should unlock these. If you didn't unlock these now, they have either glitched on you or you missed something in my walkthrough. Um, just an FYI, you can go into your inventory right now and just double check. You can see we have six weapons, we have six hats, and we have five bottoms. Um, 
So you should be good to go for your achievements. 17 out of 20, 600 G. And we are going to, I'm sorry, equip the Jack Frost stuff. Should have had you do that before we backed out there. The inventory can be confusing. So get the Jack Frost stuff equipped. Leave the clothing store. We're going to go back down and left to the totem where we flew in. And we're going to go past it to the left. Follow the path to the left and down so we can hop up this ledge. And we're going to follow the path to the left and up to eventually reach totem number 11. When you get control, go to the left and hop up the ledge here and follow the path around to the right to this pink duck and go in the cave you might remember from the beginning of the game. Go all the way up so you see the totem and then we're going to go right and stay up. Uh, there is a path on the lower portion of that cave that just leads to a dead end, so make sure you stay up to find this path with which will lead you out of the cave. Once you get out of the cave, we're going to go to the right and pop up the ledge here. Grab the jelly coin if you want. You can ignore the duck and you'll find totem number 12 behind him. Go ahead and select the Waterfall Village totem from that map to fly, or if you uh, press B, you can just fly to this Waterfall Village totem. Either way, get here. We're going to walk to the right and swim down, and we're going to have what I consider the most difficult race and fight in the game coming up here. So this is why we went and got two Hypno Sprays and two uh, of the uh, Frostbites. To help with the race and to help with the battle. Now, these are winnable without the items, but we have plenty of money, so why not use the items? Go ahead and start. Um, what we're going to do is we want to like press A once or twice at the beginning to keep up with everyone else. Once we get in here, press A on your frostbite. To freeze everyone and now you're gonna press a to keep up with everyone else and hit frostbite again and you should be able to win the race again it's it's a very difficult race even with the frostbite um, if you do have trouble and you can't win the race but you use your items um, there is a race store uh, in waterfall village so you can just go back and buy some more of them um, as I said, this is probably, other than the final boss, this is probably the most difficult race and battle in the game. So, uh, I recommend abusing the items, uh, and the excess amount of gold that we have in order to, uh, use the items to make this a cakewalk. We're going to do the same thing with the hypno spray or watches or whatever it's called. Um, immediately go into your inventory and use one of the hypno watches. This will stun your opponent and give you the advantage we need. Um, again, you can win these without the items, but we're going to make it easy on ourselves. Um, when the Hypno Watch comes back, you can feel free to use it again if you need to. I'm going to just to make it very easy on ourselves. And again, if you do struggle, if for some reason, you know, he's dodging all of your attacks or she or whatever, um, feel free to, and you fail, go back to the Waterfall Village, which has both a race shop and a uh, battle shop, and you can buy more of the Frostbites and the Hypno Watches. Um, but as I said, those fights are winnable without the items. The items just make them... Uh, far more winnable. So there's a race shop on the right and there's a battle shop on the left in Waterfall Village. Um, makes it rather easy to just shop there overall. If you do need to go back and get more items, once you defeat them, you can go up to the totem. That's totem number 13. 
and then you can grab the turtle shell, although we don't really need to. Open up your map, and we're going to fly down and right to the plucker's path totem. And from here, we're going to follow the path left until it splits, and we see an angry olive green duck. Go up the ledge. You'll, you can get a jelly coin next to the totem, and then run into the totem, totem number 14. And we're going to go down, and we need to fight three ducks that are in this cave here. Um, and these are cakewalk fights. Um, you'll probably need one or two hits per duck. Go ahead and defeat the first one. We're going to walk in and have a second duck to fight. His grandma says he is tough, so let's fight him and find out. Spoiler alert, he isn't. At least not at our level. Grab your spoils, and we'll move on to the third and final duck in the cave here. And again, an easy fight. Nothing to worry about here. Even easier if we dodge. <laughs> Look at that, perfect. With him defeated, we can walk down and we can get the bee body. Uh, the bee body can't be purchased in a store. You have to find it on the ground over here. And we need that entire outfit for a quest. So that's why we have to walk in here. Pick up your bee body and we're going to exit the cave here. And then go up and to the right to go down the ledge and follow the path to the right. And we're going to attempt, um, this next part is experimental. I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to try it. Follow this pathway up to the north and you're going to see these two stone statues. Walk to the left side of this one and then take one step to the left. So you're positioned where I am. Go into your inventory, highlight the star tab here. Press A on it. We're going to highlight the spade and press A to use it. And that gives us the pirate booty. Now there is a whole like quest sequence where you dig in three different spots. And we're going to see if we can skip that by just grabbing the booty itself. Um, go to the left here. Follow the path. And you're going to see this light blue duck who lost their ball. To, that'll give you the island hopper quest. We're going to swim to the north. First things first, we're going to grab totem number 15 over here. So go ahead and grab it. And then run back right and grab the ball on the ground. And swim back down to the duck to turn it in. That completes island hopper quest, which is number 12 of 21 complete. We're going to fly to the feather forest totem now. When you land... Open up your inventory, and we need to switch to the B uh, hat and B body. So go ahead and do that. I was selecting them instead of equipping them. That is my bad. Once you have the B stuff equipped, run down, get close to the B. And he will eventually recognize you and run to you. Um, it's usually best if he's standing on one of these stone statues, but if he flies away, try to follow him. He will eventually go to you. Then you can bring the bee to its owner and complete the bee catcher quest. Now we need to re-equip our Jack Frost stuff. So go ahead and do that. 
follow the path uh, down to the right and down again. And remember that cave we didn't go into earlier? We're going to now. Go inside and you're going to follow it left and go up. We're going to have a duck to fight here. And again, we have to fight, but this shouldn't be uh, much of a problem at the level we're at now. Once you regain control, run to the left and we'll have another duck to fight here. And again, this fight won't be a problem. Once you regain control, we're going to run to the left, and we're going to find totem number 16. So go ahead and interact with the totem, and now we need to run back to the right. Once you get past the helmet duck, walk down. You can grab the coins if you want or ignore them. And we're going to head to the left, and we're going to have a couple more ducks we have to teach a lesson to. So go ahead and let's battle this one. Once you get control, walk to the left. We'll have a second duck we need to knock some sense into. Get your spoils, and we're going to walk to the left, and there's going to be a white duck by Lava. We're going to talk to them to get a quest, and it's a very simple challenge, um, especially if you've been training, because it's very similar to the one rope challenge we did. Go ahead and chat with them to get the Lava Cave, and you immediately start the minigame. You just need to uh, press the A button so that you'll land on the next uh, land, basically. I know that's redundant. Um, so we'll just press it, and, I mean, you can see what's going on here. This is pretty simple stuff. Once you have landed on all of them, you'll move on to the other side, complete the quest. Nice of them not to make us go back to the other side. And then you can grab the whip if you want and run to the left to exit. We're going to go down into uh, Waterfall Village here. And we're going to exit on the left side. 
And when we uh, see a bee duck, we're going to go north and fly across the gap. And there's a boss duck up here, which we should have no problems with. So go ahead and uh, race and battle them. Shouldn't have any problems here. And that'll start the fight, and again, the fight shouldn't be any problem either. Get your spoils. And we need to fly back down to the Mallard Meadows totem. So go ahead and walk down to the path. Go to the left. Uh, I accidentally ran into the explorer. I think he, he can tell you where the next totem is located. So if you do have trouble, um, you can run into him, especially if you're trying to figure everything out on your own. Um, but we're going to go up into the right here, hop the ledge to get the binoculars, hop back down and talk to the orange duck to turn in the ledge hopper quest, which is quest number 15 of 21 complete. Open up your map. We're going to fly to the pluckers path totem again. We're going to follow the path all the way left into town this time. And there's going to be a green duck that was standing, or that is standing by a Marco statue in town. Go talk to them to get the racer challenge quest. And then immediately talk to them again to turn it in. And that is quest number 16 of 21 complete. And now we're going to fly up to... Uh, this totem, the Duck City totem pole. And we need to return to the training ground. Sorry about that, I just had to double check my notes. Return to the training ground. We're or training ground. We're gonna train our swimming all the way up to a hundred, and this is one of my least favorite trainings. Um, takes just under or just over twenty-five minutes. So choose swimming. We're gonna get swimming up to fifty, and I do not like this at all. It is very very difficult to last very long. So I'm gonna try to just shut up.
your best bet on these easy levels is to just do what you can to survive, or these early levels, and uh, try to get the the missiles to hit each other. But sometimes they spawn in right above you, and there's nothing you can do. And again, it's just frustrating to have them spawn right in front of you sometimes. And if they're aimed right at you, you're basically dead. Early on, you're, like I said, your best bet is to try to get them to blow up into each other, which can knock a bunch of them off your path. Um, but that's only, that's your only real defense. And unfortunately, there's no, like, indicator how far off screen they are. Yeah, so just do what you can. Well, that was dumb. It hit the other rocket, and yet still... Look at that one. That one was lined up to hit me within two seconds of spawning. Like, that's just ridiculous. And again, uh, not knowing how far off screen they were got me killed. Now, don't listen to that when it says Immortal tor Torpedoes, because they can still blow up. I'm not entirely sure what that means. I guess if there was a time limit before and they would stop chasing you eventually, I don't know. But it doesn't really change anything. You're still just going to fly or, or swim around in circles and try to avoid... Uh, hoping that they all run into each other and knock each other all off course together.
it's really hard for me to try hard at this mini game because it doesn't really matter. Other than the few seconds that I'm not sw swimming to, you know, respawn, death has really no penalty and there's no incentive for me to do well. Like, there's, there's no reason that a missile should spawn to hit me within two seconds of me starting. That's just nonsense. We reached level 70, now we get mines, which, amazing, more things to hurt us. If you're very lucky or extremely good at this, which props to you, you can try to use the mines to explode and send the missiles off course. Um, but, or... You can get yourself blown up like I did there. Ah, that wasn't how far I wanted to turn, but the turning is very... It almost feels like you turn exponentially the whole... the longer you hold the button, which is weird. Don't worry, this is the last training in the game. You don't have to hear me gripe about these anymore.
And again, I turned too sharply because of the the D-pad. I didn't intend to turn so much I would run into my own explosion, but... As if this mini game wasn't easy enough, once we hit 80, we get sharks. That was cool. Thanks, game. Okay, sharks. Sharks are even more annoying. As if this minigame couldn't get any worse. Sharks basically heat-seek you out, and they don't show up like the missiles do when they're off-screen. So if there happens to be one on the top of the screen while you're swimming up, and you don't see it, just touching it will kill you. That was awesome. My only defense mechanism is to make things blow up, and apparently that can fling things at me, such as other rockets, to kill me. That seems well designed. I'm sorry, I am in a bad mood now after my recording screwed up, and, uh... Honestly, if I could go back in time, like, eight months ago to when I start started working on this guide, I would probably do swimming first, so that we end with flying, because, uh, I hate this minigame. There are a couple that are frustrating, but this one is probably... Uh, my most hated. And there we go. Shark at the top of the screen. Don't have enough time to move. Just running into him killed me. I was having a great run, too.
Or the sharks can just ram you because they have heat-seeking ramming capabilities. Pretty sure sharks can do that. We are almost to 90, and since this minigame isn't annoying enough, at 90, the rockets become invincible and can't blow up. Because why not? That seems legit. Well, we got to 91 at least, so there's 90, now we get... Okay, they don't blow each other up, which, I mean, what else is there really to blow them up with? There was a shark. Nothing I could do about that. And that rocket was aimed directly at me when I spawned. Like... I'm sorry. I am I shouldn't say anything. Honestly, most of the time when it gets to the 90s, I just get food or something and keep tapping the A button so it restarts on its own until it dies. Because otherwise, as you've heard, uh, I get incredibly frustrated by how cheap this minigame is. Like, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of fun here, but this minigame is not where it's hidden.
Almost done. <laughs> of course. Okay, finally. Done. That's level 100 and everything, folks. That means you're going to unlock the unstoppable achievement, which is number 18 out of 20 for 150G, getting us to 750 out of 1,000 total. So we're going to go right once we exit out of the building. Go down and then right again, and we're going to get past the totem here into the water. Uh, go north above Maze Island here. We're never going to come back here. Um, when you get all the way to the right to the wall, we're going to follow it straight down. And you will come to a, a totem. Which is totem number 17. The penultimate totem. Go down and to the left, we're going to go into the weapon shop here. And we're going to buy Thor's hammer. Or Thor hammer. Sorry. Go ahead and buy it. And then go into your inventory and equip it. Go down into the water. Go straight down and to the left. And then down on the other side of this island to eventually reach some ground at the bottom here. And then walk to the left and fly across this gap. And we have a boss duck in knight's armor to fight. Um, the race is really buggy, so you might have to retry this a couple of times. Uh, but I recommend pressing A right away. And usually if I did that, I was okay. Because I jump up into a gap that gets me right to the exit. But there's a spot down here where most of the birds or ducks get stuck flying into the wall, including yourself if you take that path. And you can see none of them are catching up to us because of that. I think there were six ducks, and only three of us made it to the end because the rest of them were flying into a wall. So try to press A right off the bat and you should be okay. Um, and this fight should be relatively easy as long as you're timing your A button presses. And again, he dodged our attacks, and that can happen. You may have to replay, um, because the AI is a jerk sometimes. Once you regain control, fly north. Walk a little bit left so that you see the uh, interact point here. And then... Interact with, the, or I'm sorry, the objective. Interact with the duck standing outside. He says, I want some clams. Walk to the right and go north and you'll see a little cave entrance here. We're going to go inside and you got to follow my directions exactly. So go up, up left and you'll get your first clam go right to get a second clam go right and right again to get a third clam go up and up to get a fourth clam go down go down and go up and you'll get your fifth and final clam and then hit down right down and down to leave we're gonna go back to the duck that was in front of the trophy building and talk to him again to turn in the greedy duck quest that's 17 of 21 complete we're going to go inside and get ourselves a tourney ticket
And now open up your map and we need... Oh, okay. Sometimes it lets you fly from inside. That's weird. I wonder why it doesn't in that building. Okay. Anyways, go outside and we need to fly down to the cozy grove totem here. When you spawn, go slightly left and fly up and then hard left to find the pirate duck over here. Go ahead and chat with him. And that will turn in the treasure trail chest, which is 18 of 21 complete. We're going to fly up to Duck City here, the totem in the upper right here. Go ahead and swim south, and then follow the wall on your right down, and you'll come to a witch. Talk to her to get the witch's potion quest, and go straight down from her to eventually reach some coins, and you'll see a uh, toadstool on the ground. We're going to go all the way to the left here. We need to get to the weapon shop over here. Once we do, we're going to go to the left. Follow the path around and down. And before we fly, take a left here and you'll find the magic beans. Walk back to the path and fly across the gap and immediately walk to the right and you'll come to a pond. You'll see a crow's feather on the upper left of the pond. And now get into the water and swim to the right. Uh, you swim significantly faster than you walk, so it's easier to swim back to where we were. And once you get back to where the coins and the toadstool were, go ahead and walk up and return to the witch. Turn in the potion or turn in the quest to get 19 out of 21 complete. It gives you a strength boost, and we already have our stats max, so it doesn't really matter. Once again, we're going to go up. You can uh, swim across the water to get back to the totem, and then walk left. We need to get to the other side of the town here, so uh, go on the other side of this tournament building to the upper left. And then follow this path to the left to find the blue duck in front of the Marco statue. We beat five bosses, so we're turning that quest in. And that is boss challenge quest complete number 20 of 21. Go ahead to the right. And we need to go back to this objective building. We are in this uh, tournament. The final city tournament. And we're going to have three races and three fights. Um, other than the boss fight, nothing here should give you a, any trouble. So just go ahead and start your races and battles. Again, just make sure you're pressing the A button regularly. And you can kind of see we we are significantly faster than the other ducks. Two more races to go. Uh, also, I do want to apologize because I just realized how bad my eyes are. I've been calling the flowers an apple core. Uh, you have to go slow at the beginning because you'll just run into the back of the car, but then you can boost afterwards and win this race easily. Um, <laughs> for this entire... For the five pole playthroughs, I just assumed that was a half-eaten apple. And it's a bouquet of flowers. So if you're wondering how good my eyes are, I think uh, I deserve at least an extra 100,000 gamer score just for playing with bad eyes. At least. Maybe a million. At least a million. No, it's a half-eaten apple. Gosh. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Okay, go ahead and get your third race done.
Again, as long as you're pressing A regularly, you shouldn't have any issues with these. But there's always the chance that the game kind of glitches you out. And if you have any of the items, don't be afraid to use them. We're going to go stock up here in a minute, so. But that should be all three races done. Now we have to th do the three battles, and again, nothing to really worry about here. So go down to your battles and start those. Nothing should pose any trouble to you. Especially now that you're using Thor's hammer. Or the Thor hammer, I guess. I don't think I just electrocuted him. I think I electro exploded him. On to the second battle. Um, really, there's nothing to worry about until we get to the boss fight. And the only reason we have to worry about the boss fight is because he has electric resistant armor. So it's best to switch weapons. Cool. Can I miss three times in a row? Nope. Okay. It just makes no sense. I'm not a, I've never been, even in Pokemon, I've never been a big fan of random missing. I guess in reality it makes sense, but it just doesn't sit right with me. And with that done, we can now, well, we'll be crowned the battle champion, and then we need to fight the boss, which is the uh, training guru. And as I already said, the training guru resists the uh, Thor hammer, so we're going to switch to a different weapon. Uh, for the race, you shouldn't have anything to worry about. If you need to, feel free to use one of the frostbites. Um, but as you can see here, we are just slightly faster than him so as long as we don't get held up on anything you shouldn't have anything to worry about And with that done, with our apple core on the ground, we can now uh, start the battle. And again, we're going to switch weapons here. So change equipment, and we're going to switch to the magnifying glass here. And start the fight. And again, as long as you time your button presses, your armor resists his weapon, so you shouldn't have any problems. Now he will freeze you, which is unfortunate, but it's not too bad. Uh, 
Um, and if you are finding yourself struggling, uh, use your items. Heal yourself up, whatever you need to do. We're going to be restocking all of our items here after this fight, so feel free to use whatever you have here. Okay, and with that done... We now have to visit the two item shops in town. So, uh, first off, run to... Let me just make sure. Up and to the right here. And this brings us to the race item shop, I believe. And we're going to buy as many of uh, the Frostbite items as it'll let us. Keep buying until it says out of stock. And then we're going to do the same thing with banana peels just on the off chance. Um, you shouldn't need them, um, but just max out your banana peels as well. Everything else we should be fine on. Really, we shouldn't need the banana peels if you uh, buy the frostbites. We're going to be spamming the heck out of those. Now we need to go to the left side and get to the battle item shop here. And just like before, we're going to buy as many of the hypno watches as we can. And then we're going to buy as many of the burgers as we can. And nothing else is really necessary. You can buy the weather buttons if you want to, but you shouldn't need to. With that done, we're going to return to the training center. Just making sure we have 18 out of 20. Talk to him and he will let you into the uh, Wayfarer's Walkway, it's called. And we have a couple of puzzles we need to go through here. Uh, do be careful. If you make a wrong step here, you have to go all the way out into Duck City. So try to follow me exactly. Push this first block up three times. Go to the left here. We're going to push this first block to the right and push the upper block up to get through. In the next spot, push this first block up once, push the next block to the right, and push this block down three times. Don't push it any further or you block your path. So one, two, and three. Now go around to get down to here. We're going to push the first block down once, and then go to the right and push the third block up once. And then in this final section, push this first block to the left, push the upper block up, and you can push this uh, block to my left, left one spot, and then up and push this final block to the left to move on. In this next spot, stand right here on the right side just before the uh, conveyor start and follow my movements. Up, right, left, left, up, right, up, down, and you're good. Move on. This next one isn't very complicated, but do try to keep up with me here. Uh, fly to the left from the middle spot. So there's a middle spot here. Fly to the left to reach this platform. Go uh, one step to the left and fly up, and then fly to the left. We're going to move one step to the left and fly down. 
and then step down one, left one, and fly up, fly to the right, fly up, walk one step to the left and fly to the left, and then walk two steps to the left, fly down, and fly to the left to get through. And now we're going to get to a Zen Garden, which is just a puzzle of make sure you step on every uh, spot. So follow along with me after he talks to you here. We're going to go right, 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 down, left, down, right, down, left, 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 up, up, left, left, down, down, right, down, left, down, 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 right, 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 up, left, left, up, right, 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 up, left, left, up, up, right, right, down, right, down, 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 and right to end. With that done, we're going to walk to the right here. We're going to go all the way up. And we're going to get totem number 18. Go ahead and get the totem. And before you do anything, just so that if something screws up, walk down here and push the steps down. Um, that way, if something screws up with the fast travel, you've pushed the steps down for the... Uh, um, so you can get in without having to redo the puzzles. Go ahead and open your map up. And again, we can fly from inside of here. Not sure why we we couldn't from inside the building. We need to fly down to the Mallard Meadows totem here. We're going to walk down and we're going to talk to the Explorer Duck to turn in our quest and complete it. Um... The achievement here also glitches and is slow to unlock, so it may not unlock for you here. If you really want to, you can um, maybe go into a building, do a training, and come back out so it autosaves, and then quit out and reload. That way the achievement should unlock, or if you keep following along with me, it will unlock uh, after we defeat the final boss. So um, open up your map. And we're going to fly all the way back up to that tournament plateau totem. Totem, excuse me. Now go into the building on your right. We're going to have another champion tournament here. Three more races, three more battles, and then the final boss. The races are somewhat difficult, but that's why we bought so many frostbites here. So go ahead and start up race one. And use a frostbite right away. And now you should be okay. You can use another one if you need to. We bought ten of them for a reason. But you shouldn't need more than one. While I didn't have any problems with race 2, we're going to use another frostbite just to make sure. Uh, as I've already said, the frostbites work like uh, the, uh, um, kind of like Mario Kart, where you, I'm getting 5 points for first, Axel there got 4 for second, etc. We just need to be first place after all 3 races, so you can afford to wind up in second in one race, and you'll still win. But um, Again, go ahead and choose a frostbite right away. And then you can just spam the A button and nothing should give you any trouble here. If you need to, feel free to use a second one. But again, you should be far enough ahead that no one will catch you. Unless something glitches. We need to keep about five of them for the final bosses, and preferably six. So, 
I use one on the first two races each, and then I have two in place for race number three. Um, really, you can get by with five for the final boss, or four even, but it's easier if you have six, so... Feel free to go buy more if you need to, also. Again, right away, go ahead and uh, turn everyone into ice cubes. Use one and then just keep an eye on things. If you need a second, feel free to use it, but you shouldn't need more than one. And there we go. That'll get us all three races. One, we only used one Frostbite per, so we're set up really well. I'm sorry, I was, uh... I was confusing the two things. You can use Frostbites almost at will. That's my bad. Um, I mean, you, you can use three, four, five in the boss race if you want to, but you don't really need to. I was confusing the frostbite with the hypno thing for the battles so for the battles you're not going to need any uh items um everyone here is resist or weak to electric um except for the third guy and the third guy uh we have frost armor to resist his attack so go in and make sure you re-equip your thor's or thor hammer before you start the fights, and uh, you should have absolutely no problem with these. Go ahead and start battle two, and again, he is weak to electric, so you're going to destroy him. He does hit harder than the first guy does, so just keep an eye on your health. If, if you do start missing an attack or two, you might need to heal or use one of the Hypno Watches, but... Um, as long as your attacks hit, you shouldn't have any problem with this fight. And again, fight number three, um, he isn't weak to electric, but he's using an ice weapon, so your armor resists it, and you shouldn't have any problems with that either. And that's done. We're almost there, folks. We just have the final boss, which is, well, Marco himself. Okay, folks, another audio hiccup, so I'm re-recording the uh, champion race here. We start off uh, having a race with him. Uh, we're going to be spamming the frostbite and he's not going to have any chance here so go ahead and hit a frostbite right off the bat that'll cause him to fall back behind us quite a bit there whenever you get the frostbite back feel free to use it again 
And uh, use any energy bars you have to heal up your energy. Um, there you go, we beat him. Shouldn't have any problems with that. And now we get into the final fight. What we're going to do right away is use a Hypno Watch. So immediately open up your inventory and use a watch. That'll get us an advantage. Smack him hard. He might get one hit on you. And then we're going to get to use our special. And that'll trigger our mom showing up. Hi, mom. And now we get to fight our mom. We are, again, going to use a Hypno Watch right off the bat. That'll get us an advantage. Make sure you're hitting your A button presses here. Because um, you can get hit pretty hard. And don't be afraid to use burgers to heal, either. We use one watch on our mom. We'll only use a second one if she does that. Where she jumps out of the way of our attack. If you if you manage to hit her with your, your special both times, you don't need to use a second hypno watch. But if she manages to dodge one of your specials, uh, use a hypno watch to give yourself the advantage back. And now you fight Marco again. Uh, once again, immediately use a Hypno Watch to give yourself an advantage. Be ready after this next special. We're going to use another Hypno Watch after we hit him. Just to be safe. If he survives. He didn't. No reason to worry. But if he were to survive that hit, use another Hypno Watch on him and that will end the fight. We have all those excess items. You should use them. And that brings us... To the final achievement in the game, folks. 20 out of 20 for 1000 G. That got us the champ achievement for 150 G. Um, we also got the Marco medal. Because the, the recording glitched, I had to reload the game and the achievement popped. If you had been following along with me, the Marco medal achievement would pop right now too. Um, after we completed the boss fight. Um... If it didn't, again, you should be able to exit the game and reload, and it should pop a, a, upon re-entry. The game does recognize what achievements you've completed and will pop them if your save file has the achievements completed. Um, generally, it looks like a couple of them were just coded to only pop at the end of a battle, so that's why uh, the Fly achievement and the Champ achievement or excuse me, the Marco's Golden whatever, Marco Medal achievement only pop uh, after you do battles after completing the objectives. So, for whatever reason, those two seem to be coded for uh, popping after fight. So if for some reason you reload the game and it doesn't pop, and you fight Marco and it doesn't pop, you can use some of the random battles we didn't do. Uh, make sure that your save file has all the quests done. Um... Because there is a chance that maybe you missed something along the way. You can go into your quests and uh, just check that all of them are green. If all of the quests are green, then the achievement glitched out on you. But if you're missing one, you can uh, use my... Um, well, you can try to remember where my videos were. Um, I am making a text walkthrough, and I might have a link to the quests in the description if you're having problems. Um, reach out to me.
if you did have problems and I'll, I'll make sure to get you a list of the quests and their solutions so you can uh, get all of the quests done. But with that out of the way, folks, that's your completion, all 1,000 G. I think it took us probably around eight and a half hours total. I'm not sure exactly how long this is going to be, but that's significantly less than the 10 to 12 TA estimate. So if you have any questions or comments for me, as always, reach out to me, and I'll do my best to answer them. But if not, uh, I will see you guys in whatever the next walkthrough I make is.